Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Wild Criminologist. In today's episode we're going to be talking about bias and how you can actually use Google to visualise your own biases. So what exactly is bias? Well, in a research sense, bias can be anything which can influence your results. This could be structural or it could be internal. For the purposes of this episode, we're going to be referring to internal bias, specifically confirmation bias, as this is something which is a bit of an issue with social media and how algorithms actually influence how we learn inf new information. For this type of bias, it generally starts off as an existing belief in which you hold a very specific opinion about a topic doesn't matter what topic it is, but you hold a strong opinion on that matter. This opinion then filters out any information which you may disagree with regarding that topic. Here's an example of how that confirmation bias will filter and reinforce your existing beliefs. So let's say you're looking for a little bit more information on that topic. Normally, a person would utilize a search bar, such as Google or, God forbid, Bing. But next, you type in what you want to find out as you see on the screen. This will then present a list of options for you to choose from, which generally support what you've searched for. This is particularly problematic when it comes to search engines, as the more biased your search terms, the more biased your results will be. This is a compounding factor in how digital technology interacts with confirmation bias. This then confirms your beliefs and reinforces your opinion while diminishing the opposition. This is a bit of an issue here because it doesn't allow you to actually interact with new information which may be contrary to what you believe. And finally, this basically becomes your existing belief again, and it just starts this cycle over and over. However, when you complete a research unit in university, you're actually trained to mitigate this internal confirmation bias, or at least in my experience anyway. One of these methods is to actually limit your search terms. This allows for a broader set of results to be displayed, as you can see on the screen. This is actually really important because it allows you to be exposed to new information that you may not actually agree with and thus it allows you to expand your knowledge of the unit and providing that you don't dismiss that out of hand, it can actually build a more objective set of beliefs within yourself. This allows you to break down the cycle of confirmation bias right from the beginning, turning your new cycle into searching for information, finding new information, and updating your existing belief. This is one of the core skills used for critical research methods, because it allows you to read more broadly and accumulate information without prejudice. So give it a try yourself. Go into Google, pick a topic you're passionate about, and then limit your search terms to only two or three words. This will hopefully give you more varied results. And if you start to realize that you may have actually had a bit of bias on the issue, take a screenshot and post it on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever, and use the hashtag Google bias. Hopefully you've stuck around to watch this whole episode because I'd really like to see what you guys thought. And stay tuned because I've actually got some new things coming up and hopefully a little bit more regular content. That's it for now, guys. Hope you have a good weekend.